Wireless or wired mouse? The age-old question. Well, not really, but what's with all the negative hype? Are wireless gaming mice really no good for gaming? Find out on today's episode of East Coast Tech. What's going on guys? Andrew here with another episode of East Coast Tech. Now, any gamer worth their salt will tell you that wireless gaming mice are absolute trash for gaming, and why would you even, bruh? But why? Well, wireless gaming mice, keyboards, and other wireless peripherals tend to operate over a radio frequency. This radio frequency could fall under Bluetooth, infrared, or even the Wi-Fi in your house. These radio signals are under constant bombardment from other radio signals in the environment and with each other. And it's because of this signal interference that we can sometimes get input lag. Dreaded input lag is a delay between you pressing a button or clicking the mouse and the action appearing on the screen. A good wired mouse would have almost no input lag, so then why even bother with a wireless mouse? It really comes down to comfort and convenience. Without cords to get in the way, wireless mice are an appealing option to those who hate cable clutter and love clean setups. As far as convenience is concerned, portability in my option is the cat's pajamas for wireless mice. But why would that matter to gamers? We're often plastered to our desks shooting at bad guys and trying not to die. Shouldn't I just be using a wired, wired mouse since I'm not really going anywhere? Well, yeah. But not everybody games at an elaborate battle station. Uh, most of the world is on a crappy laptop, mashing away at League of Legends. So for the gamer on the go, or to where existing mouse options are suboptimal, a wireless mouse starts to look like an appealing option. So how much do they affect gaming? Well, we're going to test that. I'll play a round of Overwatch once with my wired Razer Naga mouse and then with my wireless Logitech MX Master. I'll make a note here that using the MX Master is an optimal wireless mouse for this test as it is hailed as being one of the best on the market right now. So let's get into testing. Up first is my wired mouse, the Razer Naga. I'm already pretty used to this mouse, therefore it's no wonder that I'm pretty comfortable moving around, aiming, and activating my abilities. Overall, I'm not noticing any input lag, but then again, why would I? Um, the motions are quite smooth as I'm used to this mouse already, so... Um, I'm gonna finish this round and then move on to my test for the MX Master. Alright, so right off the bat with the MX Master, I can definitely tell the difference between the sensors on these two mouse. Um, that's not really a bad thing though, um, it's still quick and responsive and the, the, the clicks are a little less tactile than what I'm used to, but it's not really what I'm testing here. And uh, I'll be back in a moment. Alright, so now for the comparison. Honestly, I didn't really notice a difference other than I don't feel the cord dragging around my desk while I play. Um, which can be good or bad depending on your preferences. Um, there is a weight difference between the mice as well. Um, there's always a learning curve when using new um, new equipment and hardware, and honestly, I can chalk up most people's apprehension to wireless mice as them just being different. Also, don't operate them near a microwave. I mean, really when it comes to input lag, it, it comes down to location, how many devices you have currently using up that radio frequency, and um, Bluetooth mice are particularly good at dealing with interference as they tend to only interfere with other Bluetooth devices. USB dongles and the like, however, tend to operate on a 2.4 GHz band, which if you've ever set up a Wi-Fi enabled router or access point, should know that there's a very common frequency for wireless internet traffic. So the fact that I get very little input lag with my MX Master can be mostly attributed to the fact that there aren't that many devices in my house operating on a 2.4 GHz band. I tend to use the 5 GHz band here, mostly for the increased bandwidth, and uh, the only device I have I think is a lowly wireless printer. Yes. All in all, if you're a super competitive or even professional gamer, stick with the wired mice 
every fraction of a second does make a difference in these kinds of scenarios, but for the average gamer guy or gal, using a wireless mouse isn't totally a bad thing. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you hated it, dislike it, get subscribed. Links to where you can buy the products featured in this video will be featured in the video's description. Again, this was Andrew with East Coast Tech, and I'll see you next time.